You're listening to National Health Executive's Finger on the Pulse podcast with me, your host, Matt Roberts, to guide you beyond the headlines with news, views, and insider truths from across the healthcare sector. Today's episode is brought to you by Brother UK. Brother's print, scan, and specialist labeling solutions help improve everyday IT processes to deliver better experiences for patients and staff in healthcare. Welcome back to NHE's Finger on the Pulse podcast. On today's episode, we um, are delving straight into IT, into healthcare, and how the whole puzzle fits together. We're asking the simple sounding but quite complex question of can IT impact patient care? Thankfully, I'm not taking this challenge on alone. I'm delighted to be joined by Jed Cairns and Matthew Jones from Brother UK. So welcome to you both. Hi, everyone. Hi, Matt. Nice to see you. Perfect. And I guess the best place to start would naturally be a hand across to yourselves, introduce what you do yourself and what Brother in a wider scope do. So I suppose we'll start with Jed, you, if you don't mind. Yeah, sure. Uh, thanks, Matt. I've been with Brother about four years now. and My speciality is anything barcoded related. So whether that's uh, any kind of blood bag sampling or wristband printing, anything to do with what we call auto ID. Um, so I'm head of the category of the products that are used in our technology. And I work across all verticals. Um, but healthcare is a particularly interesting one because it's uh, it's governed quite heavily with um, with obviously safety and control, but also a standard used by GS1, which, uh, which we'll talk about later. But uh, that's my role at Brother. Perfect. And Matthew, the same for yourself, if you don't mind? Sure thing. Yeah, I've been with Brother a little longer now. This is coming up to 12 years. I'm currently uh, working the end user team. And by end user, what we mean is the customers actually use the kit that we manufacture. We're split into two halves. We've got the commercial team, so a world that includes things like retail and leisure and hospitality. And uh, a bigger half, really, which is public sector and uh, predominantly healthcare. So we've been involved in selling our products and integrating them into healthcare now for about 20 years. Perfect. And obviously, this podcast and these discussions have come about because um, both ourselves at National Health Executive and Brother, we've been quite close to working in the last couple of sort of months around a body of work with our primary and our secondary care audiences. That's been largely around sort of the understanding of technology, how it relates to patient care. And we've discovered some quite interesting sort of facts that came out of that, the most significant being this quite polarizing opinion, it seemed, around whether IT and whether these solutions that you have mentioned that you have great experience in handling, whether they have an impact to that patient, to that end user. And I suppose from your points of view, jumping into it as suppliers, so quite a unique view into this uh, this side of things, do you see that it has an impact? And if so, how much? Yeah, I mean, I can jump in on that one. Um, Over the last year, we've managed to gain about five or six different case studies and white papers where we've worked with uh, different hospitals and trusts and their needs. And the same things come to the the surface generally, and that is about not taking away the caregivers from giving care the primary role. So um, we've got situations probably in five strong areas where we've either saved time for caregivers in terms of the process that they use, or we've been able to increase the quality of the care that they give by using the IT. Definitely. And as you say there, it's one of the very big aspects, isn't it? Not taking carers and taking away these healthcare workers from the patients they care for, because ultimately that's the part of their job that got them into that job. It's what their passion is. They're there to help people. They don't want to be there having to fight the technology. Yeah, we we are finding that a key theme, aren't we, in terms of consistently the message coming out of the, the NHS. Interest is, is is the passion for quality care. I, I think I think Matt, it's in it's in the DNA of the of the caregivers. Basically, you know, you, you take a role in healthcare because you care about people, and fundamentally, what you don't want to be doing is thinking about the IT or the tech that you're using, which is taking you away from that uh, core um, skill and core uh, desire that you have within your role of a caregiver. So it's important that we make sure that when we, our responsibility is taken seriously, in terms of making sure the technology is is fit for purpose and maximizes the the, the uh, the patient care that can be given. Absolutely. And as you touch on there, um, Jed, it's very much it's ensuring that we can maximize that time. And that doesn't necessarily mean it is one huge big win where you take back an hour massively. I suppose with your expertise you've seen in handling a lot of the barcode solutions, you've probably seen that a couple of seconds or a millisecond here probably adds up over the course of a day, a shift, a week. 
I, th- I think the expression is marginal gains in this in this day and age, yes. Matt. So it's one of those things that we're always trying to inch forward as best as we can or, or creep forward with every kind of application that we have. And the days of, uh, well, so, so actually surprisingly, you know, we had, uh, going back to the survey, there, there is still a large proportion, actually 12%, still handwriting wristbands uh, to give to patients, which is was a staggering uh, output from the survey that we conducted. So there are still significant gains, never on marginal gains that, that can be done. But in, in the most cases, you know, people are, are, are are strong advocates of the systems they have now. They believe in the robustness of the systems that they have now. Um, so we can, when we do talk to customers now, it's it's about providing maybe, maybe not a marginal gain in time saving, but maybe a little bit more security, uh, updating the technology, uh, that that kind of thing, uh, which is uh, now creeping into uh, the overall purchase decision or the or the usage uh, uh, criteria. Yeah, I'd agree with that. It's, it seems to be the you know the situation where we're making patients safer, but also achieving some of the things outside, which would be you know moving towards being paper light, for example. Or, you know, if you're talking about the incremental gains before, uh, we had Barking having a Redbridge University who managed to save two minutes per blood bottle that they were labeling by moving over to one of our solutions. Uh, and there were three or four labels per patient. So if you can imagine, you know, just that in itself was 10 minutes quicker per patient when they were, you know, processing the blood through the system and linking it up to the GS1 solution that Jed was talking about before. So we're finding that these are incremental gains we can make in lots of places. And when you add them together, yeah, they are seriously, seriously big lumps of time. Yeah, absolutely. And as we, um, you say there, saving two minutes um, per blood bottle that's a huge saving over a period of time but it's also those little wins I suppose we could call them that you don't necessarily as a patient see happen but if a trust can put in place it means that they will see the benefit that their doctor's there quicker or their nurse is there quicker or their health work um, professionals around the place can support them with tasks they need. Absolutely and I think you know if, if speed and reliability is something that trusts are able to have a look at that can you know it can really lead to significant decreases in in issues around things like disease containment processes so the less downtime for any of your solutions you know because we constantly at brother talk about how reliable we are compared to our competition but in the real world this means less intervention less intervention means you know less disease containment processes so it's not just a soft cost of time and being able to get the carers back caring what we want to be doing basically also means that it's safer while doing so. Yeah, and and we saw some elements of that in the survey results as well, in that the sort of range of things that the labelling systems and that the technology was being used for was very diverse. I mean, even in the the sort of few minutes we've spoke now, we've heard a couple of different examples. Mm. And it's perhaps not something you, you necessarily appreciate until you actually think about it, that saving time in these processes doesn't just affect one task or one job here they cover a whole host of roles yeah we've got some of our pieces of kit are taking on four different roles at the moment and because of the sort of move during digitization to the workstation on wheels or the wow that we know that um hospitals spend thousands on and have hundreds of parked up they've got a mobile print uh, situation on each of these that can be used across a multitude of different uh, different solutions and outputs and if I can, if I can add to that, Matt, Matt, you were just saying there, you know, one, one of the other things that came out from the survey was the the desire that in their next generation of technology, that the, the move to wireless and mobility and, and bedside care was something that was there was a real desire within a lot of the a lot of the responses, but also clearly in secondary health, that was uh, was surprising to us because up until now we've been mainly talking about fixed position label printing, wristband printing, blood blood sampling printing, right. but the, clearly to again provide uh, bedside care and to provide uh, efficiency, then a wireless uh, solution is is was definitely a, a, a big desire on uh, how you would improve technology moving forwards. So no leaving yeah. the patient's side, no you know walking off to print a small a small document and perhaps use A4. You know we're using our compact, um, reliable, tough printers to print you know appropriate sized amounts of print, which is helping the trust achieve their paper light goal. Uh, absolutely, as as you say, even in just that scenario and that example there there's multiple different moments there that have saved not just time as we've mentioned before but they've saved resource they've cut down on emissions because we are moving towards that paper light presumably in the current climate we're in if they're printing things such as case notes i know from my own traumatic shall we we joke experiences Mm -hmm. of many years um, several years working in medical records uh, when i was younger 
there's so much paper and stuff like that that they're not having to transport if they can print on site in mobile there's all these sort of things and it's a full health support it supports the full health system through That's something right. that is actually a mobile printer on a mobile workstation that you wouldn't necessarily right. thought of and they'll be on site you know there'll be um, a system there of software which is chosen by the trust and making sure that we can you know plug and play directly into those means that things like medical records and pathology and any phlebotomy can be printed in appropriate size things for any hard copy that needs to be kept mm-hmm. but also using gs1 we can we can back up our uh, barcode journal and uh, we can make sure that the journey of the the cost you know, the patient's information sorry i'm so used to talking the commercial world as well but you know we do see the end users as being the people that are directly affected by our kit and that is the caregivers they are our customer really so we need to listen to what they do um and you know if we can give them a sort of go-to way to print but also uh, to manage documents within their own propriety systems then we can probably tick a few more boxes then start to design a whole new um, architecture around anything bespoke each time and if i can if i can add to that matt because we mentioned we've mentioned gs1 a few times there and again coming back to the survey one of the resounding um uh, supports that was giving out there was they had a lot, a lot of respect for the gs1 standard and of course a lot of work is done in the background by by the gs1 people to make sure there's this harmonization as they call it in terms of different systems being compatible and making sure that everyone's working to the same standard something which again came across the you know just some of the comments and responses we got that uh, the the, the ad lib uh, conversation uh, responses that we got in the survey was i wish it was more compatible i wish they spoke to each other i wish there yeah. was you know there was continuation of information between that su- that supply and that supply and that software system and i think the gs1 is something that we 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 wholeheartedly believe in we support it we're members of that and you know we're trying to make sure that you know we bring along bring up to di- up to speed and up to date all the all the uh, trust that we're talking to about certainly adopting gs1 as quickly as possible so that you have harmonization where you can I and mean, it's not available everywhere of course but but where you can there is a standard and you should be working to it and we can help you with that yeah absolutely and as you mentioned the sort of uniformity that uh, gs1 can give these solutions and make sure they can talk to each other is huge for healthcare where every trust may have in an area may have different systems but patients aren't bound by those trust uh, boundaries absolutely so being able to have that communication is massive and even with gs1 i suppose just as a slight segue we're seeing that there's a big focus towards healthcare presumably from them by recent additions to their board of members from the department of health of everybody collectively from every step through those setting the standards to yourselves as the suppliers to the trust using it uh, they seem to have this real understanding and appreciation that if we all work to a gold standard mm. it helps everyone anything yeah, I, that you know speeds up a process and ensures more accuracy you know it's going to remove that potential for human error there and uh, you know and human error healthcare you know is is invaluable yeah and i suppose that's that doesn't just extend to the sort of uh, solutions we've talked about recently one of the things that came out in the survey that was sort of a very interesting point um that sat alongside a lot of the stuff we saw was that Across the board, we're seeing a major shift, obviously, circumstances factoring into that towards new technologies and processes and procedures from video conferencing to decreased numbers of people in hospitals to different workflows. But it's essential, isn't it, that when we add any of these new technologies, when we add any of these new processes, it helps the right services for it, but we don't force it on everyone. We have Mm -hmm. to make sure that solutions are right for every service and they may have to be more bespoke shall we say is that something from your experience you have a big part in insuring as well yeah i'd say that just like uh, we're not going to be able to get everyone over to video conferencing and and neither should we you know for um for consultations with with clinicians and clinical experts there's always going to be um a portion of a society that isn't a- able to do that but also generally that means the portion of society that are going to need most of the help from the nhs as well so just as that can't be one size fits all solution we understand that uh, our kit has to work with all the different propriety softwares and we need to get recognition from all of those sort of governing bodies that we've already discussed to make sure our kit does plug and play that's why we have uh, pre-sales technicals consultants across our team that are you know very well experienced when a visit is necessary into hospital especially if we're taking over perhaps a legacy product which isn't as reliable as they want to do that we can provide on-site support as and when it is good to go 
Do you know what I mean? We can we can generally land the kit and say plug that in and it'll work. But if any hand holdings needed, we one hundred percent want to be there because we need the clin- the clinical experts to be able to use our kit. Today's episode is brought to you by Brother UK. Brother's print, scan, and specialist labeling solutions help improve everyday IT processes to deliver better experiences for patients and staff in healthcare. Yeah. So so hands up who you who were heard of Zoom or Teams a year ago. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's it's quite bizarre how the world has changed in terms of the use of that, and you know we're no different in our our daily lives now. You know we're uh, we're st- we're struck by lockdown, and uh, we can't go to our office either. So for the last you know eight nine months, we've been working with uh, with teams to do exactly the same thing. But you know there is there are as Matt just Matt just said, you know there are definitely occasions where it has to be face to face, and it's you know we can draw parallels in the commercial world or the or the healthcare world where you know where you have to have engagement, you ha- uh, and, and even from just from a, from a a social perspective and you know more vulnerable and mental health you know it's, it's very difficult to, to to diagnose and help when you you can't see the person and they can't see you and you can't you can't show empathy you can't show support for them you can't put your arm around them all those kind of things that you know you know doctors and nurses do all day every day um it's made it made it far more difficult for them to do that so we have to be compassionate about you know the kind of struggles that they're uh, they're going through and again, you know, messaging coming back from uh, uh, from from the survey was yes, it's, it's Teams and, and and Zoom is is great, you know, for the majority of things, but you just simply can't replace that 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 one to one conversation, that, uh, that 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 you know that, that eye to eye contact with a customer, a uh, customer. Sorry, <laughs> going back to the commercial world now, uh, with with a patient uh, it, um, to to make sure you know they can see you know your how how you're caring for them. So. Uh, you know the use of tech is is great and it has its place, but you you simply can't replace that with uh, with uh, that that uh, social interaction. And I suppose that's where the conversation we've had, and even just the the hearing of that, which I'm sure our listeners will sort of appreciate, having that understand that clear, for want of a better word, of using understanding again, understanding of the um, the way technology has to support. It's not there to overrule um it's a really important step because it, it changes the mindset as that will factor into the solutions brother create the uh, the technology that you put in there as a supplier that you are there to support you're there to help if there needs additional training to make sure clinicians are up to speed with it that happens if you need to as you say take over a legacy project it's not just a plug and play it's making sure that it merges correctly and they're all key decisions that people have to make to have a successful solution that sometimes maybe get overlooked in the sort of scatterbrained world that we're currently in at the moment. Yeah, I think I think from from our perspective, you know, you know, being being quite callous and just kind of business and commercial about this, you know, healthcare is just one vertical of where our printers are used in in you know in the in the big wide world out there. But I think that the the buying decisions of of a of a healthcare op- operator is completely different from a retail store or from a uh, a delivery organisation or something like that. Because you know, at the end at the heart of it, it's not about making money. It's not yeah. about driving driving profit. Uh, it is about you know how do I increase my my time with my patients to give them exactly what they're looking for but also at the same time making sure that i'm getting reliable sustainable cost effective products that when called upon they do exactly what i ask them to do and it's really important to make sure that you know we're we are there to pick up that responsibility and make sure that we're offering products and services and support that enable that to just to be a very simple decision when you've got you know this is going to sound a, a very uh, um, uh, over the top now but lives at stake or certainly welfare at stake of different people that has to be the priority so the way that we treat that is, is again is very very compassionate understanding that the tech is just part of delivering a service to a to a to a person who needs needs support and needs help That's right. yeah absolutely and as you sort of there say there there's a much more human side to healthcare no matter what approach you take it from be that supplier be that clinician be that end user and patient the reason everyone is involved in that situation is to ensure that everything is running efficiently it's helping the patient and it is ultimately as i don't even think it is over the top it is saving lives be that not necessarily even the patient that is it directly being affected but those down the line who can now have their clinician see them and there's not a delay, especially in a world where we're going to have potentially increasing backlogs for some time, all this efficiency and all this sort of optimization is essential. Yeah, I mean, coming from the commercial world about five or six years ago and over into uh, public sector and particularly healthcare, it was something I was immediately struck by was that the currency that people talk about as a, as a theme that emerged from every conversation that I had was patient care. Okay, the ultimate goal was to increase the levels of patient care, the amount of patient care, and to get away from downtime 
And we were really well accepted uh, in primary care some 15, 20 years ago and continue to be super strong there. Um, and, you know, we've been going up against the big boys in, in terms of secondary care because we, you know, expanded our portfolio and looked at different markets. And then when people started to talk to us and hear that we had that good legacy and we understood we were coming from the patient care you know, point of view rather than saying we can do you this pop, this box of tin at this price. Um, it, it meant that we could really open up our network and share some thought leadership and that sort of thing with, um, you know, some of the key movers and shakers in secondary care. But it always came back down to patient care. It always came back down to safety. Um, and yeah, making the trust more efficient. Yes, helping the trust to, to, to achieve its goals that, that you know, that are governed from a bit higher. Like things like Paperlite, that goes hand in hand with what we're trying to do. But the constant emergent theme that we're always thinking about, when it were, whether we're tracking assets or improving efficiency or we're looking at different ways to integrate our kit, it always is with the end result of a tangible increase in patient care. Yeah. It, it absolutely is. And we saw that throughout the survey as well. I think across the uh, the two sort of areas of primary and secondary care we questioned, there was probably close to 20 questions in there. And I'd struggle to think back and think of ones where either through the direct answers they gave or through the sort of ad lib comments we got, that there wasn't some link that people had to take it to patient care. It is very much the sort of essence in everything that's done in healthcare. I was intrigued by a comment that somebody put actually that says, you know, we're in danger of breeding a new generation of faceless doctors and GPs. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> so, I, but it, so again, it goes back to them that they, even they're concerned that, you know, we're going into this world of AI and we're going into this, you know, over the phone triage video um, type of uh, service yeah. service delivery. Okay, you know, we're, we're turning into a call center, and that's that's clearly the last thing they want to they want to move into. So, um, yeah, it was interesting to see just some of the ad, like say ad, ad lib comments. You think um, really Part what? Of yeah, very heartening to see that you know the physical and human element um is something that was not you know no one wanted to really put that at risk and that's at the heart of it yeah it it very much is and i suppose as we um we come towards the sort of last parts of it we shift probably should shift the focus slightly back again to brother and as an organization i suppose i'll ask each of you individually to just sort of sum up the conversations we've had and how yourselves are really factoring into that debate the sort of top line of how brother and what you do is impacting or is helping the people you you engage with impact patient care so i suppose we'll go to matt first because we chucked it on get uh, Jed the first time <laughs> that's okay that's fine okay well i mean i touched upon our legacy that we've got in primary care and um you know as we you know went out into I mean, our coverage in primary care in terms of seeing print happen uh, next to the doctor that you sat, you know, we got up into the high 70s uh, in terms of the percentage of the market share. But because we were spending a lot of time talking to trust, CCGs, you know, depends how go how far you want to go back for what they were all called. Uh, time and again, the message was our reliability. So we just built a real confidence over the past sort of decades of 15 years in that area. And we didn't rush any product into market, as Jed, you know, can expand on as head as the category. We've seen some real investment in um, our, our mobile on-the-spot labeling, you know, bedside labeling, that sort of thing, so that we can go up against our competitors with pride, really. You know, the things that make us stand out are the fact that we've got a, a UK-based customer-facing team of, you know, up to about 16 people, if you include the pre sale support and the technical support. These are people that you won't see once. These are people that will be with any buyers or anyone you know who's in charge of any procurement or project throughout the sales cycle where we're involved. But then after support, in terms of where they need to go and you know, and as their needs change, we're around for that. You know, our motto is at your side, and that motto has got traction. It's not just a throwaway comment. You won't see us advertise a lot on TV. You know, we rely on our relationships with the people that already have our kit. It's good kit. They want to buy it again. And, you know, we really want to keep that going. And it's through this sort of investment in learning about our customers with people like NHE uh, that mean we can, you know, plan for the future and make sure that we're putting our research and development in the right direction. Absolutely. And I suppose, Jed? Yeah, let me build on that. <laughs> well done, Matt. Thank you. For, that sounds like a great company to work for. Um, if I, <laughs> <laughs> I recommend it. <laughs> Maybe we change the motto to at your bedside. Um, oh, wow. um, I, I, look, I, I think we have to be honest in terms of, you know, why, why is Brother in this, in this marketplace and what can we offer to healthcare? And if we ask any healthcare operative just to look around and look at the labels, look at the pieces of paper that are flying around your organization, it's immense. 
uh, we have a place to play within your organization. Um, and, you know, some of the applications that we find ourselves talking to customers about wristbands, pharmacy, blood samples, blood bags, case notes, visitor management, path lab labels, asset marking, you know, reports of all sorts of size and shapes. And, you know, when you think about actually when you start to list down the kind of things that we do and Brother has a solution for that, then I think we are absolutely a relevant player to, to work with healthcare. And it's, it's, it's a vast majority of our business is healthcare, whether primary or secondary. So um, as Matt, as Matt you know, has said quite eloquently, it's what we do. You know, we're, we're passionate about working with customers, about giving them the right solutions. We're very conscious about patient care. Uh, we, it's our responsibility to make sure we provide cost-efficient, sustainable products that are reliable, that don't take you away from the patients. And um, yeah, we're looking to uh, looking forward to working with uh, with everyone in the future. Absolutely. Amazing, and I think that's such a, a nice summing up of everything. As you say, we're hitting the key points that are important for everyone who, that we've surveyed in health, and we're really explaining the reasons why you stand out that legacy, that sort of all stages care um, taken. So I think for myself, and I'm sure just the same from the listeners as well, thank you so much both of you for taking the time. It's been really insightful, really interesting conversation. Our pleasure. pleasure. We hope that it's been a help to our customers as well. And I'm sure if they um, they have really enjoyed like what they've heard or it's really struck a chord with them, um, I don't know if either of you has uh, a best way that they should get in touch. Please do reach out. We're both on uh, LinkedIn, Jed Cairns and Matthew Jones at Brother UK. That's probably the fastest way in. Today's episode is brought to you by Brother UK. Brother's print, scan and specialist labelling solutions help improve everyday IT processes to deliver better experiences for patients and staff in healthcare. Thanks for listening to this episode of NHE's Finger on the Post podcast. Join the conversation on social media or get in touch through the link on our website. To stay up to date with all the latest news and episodes, make sure to subscribe, drop us a rating on whatever streaming service you're using. This has been National Health Executive's Finger on the Post podcast. Thanks for listening and I'll see you next time.